Can I talk to you today about our Lord and Savior? Money? It's vlogging at 988. I'm not sure I figured out how to use this thing. Ah, looks like it did. Cool. Little guy made me a shot of espresso, it looks like. I think it's done. Ooh, this is gonna be a punch. Good morning. It's Sunday. Daylight savings has caused us to have an even later start than anticipated. I slept for probably like 10 hours, which is great. Could have slept a little bit more, but decided, you know, I gotta get up and enjoy the day. Ooh. <laughs> but we're gonna go for a wander. This fortress city needs to be fully explored. Also, I realized yesterday that I didn't really, I wasn't very zoomed out when I did the spinny bit. So here's, here's what the rest of the place basically looks like. It's pretty big. And the color scheme is really nice. We'll do like a tour of this maybe tomorrow morning on our way out of town. But the thing that's interesting about this city is that the fortress isn't just like an old museum. Like people still live there. Most of the restaurants that are near me are up there. It looks like it's gonna be pretty lively. So the weather is beautiful. I'm gonna drink this shot of plastic espresso and then let's wander off and find ourselves something to eat. Seriously, that's it. I just walked outside and here we are. I wanna walk, uh, I wanna walk all the way around it. I feel like there's, got, there's gotta be a pad trail over here. Ducks have definitely got it figured out. It's not a bad spot. This is kind of like the external ramp. Oh, there they go. I don't know what I'm walking into. This looks like one of the old gates though into the city. It's not well maintained. This isn't where the tourists go. This isn't where I went yesterday, but I thought, hey, I want to explore around before I go in. And this is where I found myself. I kind of want to get up on the ramparts as much as anything, but eh, I'm not sure if I'm about to run into a dead end. Very, very possible. Oh, no, well, here's some boards to help me get up to the next level. So maybe I found the unofficial entrance. I don't think this is the official alternate entrance. At least not right now, they're doing a bunch of construction here. That way's blocked off. Pretty sure that's the way back to the main entrance. I'm just gonna keep walking around this way. <laughs> Something smells really good. I think I'm gonna walk for a little bit longer, but Lunch soon, it'd be a good option. Definitely gonna hit up the Ramparts Museum after lunch. There's a lot more going on up here than I would have guessed actually. Lots of restaurants. Two gelato places within spitting distance of each other. This one looks way more fun. That one looks way more like old school. Gelato is not what I'm looking for though. I'm gonna try and find, there was one restaurant that my host recommended, but I kind of expected this to be sm even smaller than it is. Keep wandering. I'm really not sure what this stoplight is all about, but you know, <laughs> add some flavor.
I found the real main tourist entrance. I walked by it yesterday. I, I prefer sneaking in through the ramparts. Microphone wasn't on. Figured if I was gonna go French, I might as well go full French and get some escargot. But if you haven't had escargot before, it's the snails are just kind of chewy and nondescript. It's be like if you're okay with seafood, it's like a tamer version of a mussel, I guess. They're just kind of chewy. What you're really in it for though is the parsley butter, which is garlicky and delicious, and that's what I got it for was the garlic. <laughs> It was a truly French lunch, both in the uh, the food itself and how long it took. Not in a bad way, their service was fine. Just kind of relaxed my way through that. I'm gonna walk through the castle, I don't know, this museum about the ramparts and the fortress itself. Check it out, tell you what I learned, if I learned anything, which I'm sure I will. And then, you know, take our wander the rest of the way through the fortress. It's nice, really chill up here. I'm currently right here. I'm pretty sure that I snuck in down here. It looks like we get to walk along the ramparts here cop some better views. This feels so Game of Thronesies. Obviously the uh, courtyard over here too. One of the things I've learned that was interesting was that the guy who planned and executed at least the beginning of the restoration of this place was the same guy who restored Notre Dame in Paris. That's pretty cool. Dude did a lot of work while he was restoring things. But it started out as a Roman fortress. At least part of the original wall is Roman. And then they built on it over time and it was a fortress on the frontier of course with Spain and then you know, useful for a period and eventually not so useful over time. As I fear we all suffer, but it's cool. It's really neat. Actually, it's so much more comprehensive. There's so much more you can walk and see than I would have expected. This place is in great shape. This is really, really cool. And it's huge. It's super impressive to think that this was actually, you know, a fortress back in the day. Not a bad brunch spot. Ooh, let's go out here. This is really cool. I'm enjoying just walking around a little bit. And you can see like, they've got a bunch of, they're not cannonballs, but I guess they're, you know, catapult fodder, catapult balls, trebuchet balls, lying around all over the place. They've excavated a lot of really interesting stuff in here. One of the signs they said for Greco-Roman architecture or building were the bricks. They would actually use bricks like this to level out walls. Not exactly sure how they did it. I don't, you know. Don't ask me that, but this is the Roman section where you can apparently, if that video wasn't lying to me, these walls make up more of the Roman section. One of the other interesting things they didn't talk about in the video, but one of the ladies that I met last night said, was that you might have seen in some of my photos from last night on this section, and maybe I'll have to come back. We'll see if we can catch a view of it from up here. Somebody painted giant yellow rings on the entire thing and in perspective so that when you looked at it from a particular angle, it looked like they were radiating out from, I think, the gate. Impressive, probably not okay, but really kind of cool and yeah, impressive. It definitely pissed off the community based on what she was saying. Can you imagine coming and watching a show here? This is awesome. I 
I didn't even know this was here. So many things to discover. There's so many different styles, like the size of the bricks or the stones that they cut out, the way that they're laid out, even the colors of the tops, like of the roofs being red or blue. It's fascinating, just like built over how much time. I, the one thing I need to make sure, I need to get inside this cathedral. Check this out, look at the, just look at that rose. Look at these windows. Gotta figure out how to get in there. And then I'll feel like I've been fairly accomplished today. If you're gonna do this, definitely be ready for some stairs. I mean, there are no elevators to get up here. The views are nice. The whole, I mean, it just, it's just kind of, anytime you end up going into a well-preserved ancient city, like there's a little bit of a ruin element to this, obviously, but it feels like it just puts things into real perspective, especially when you live in big modern cities that sprawl forever. To come back to something like this, which was probably wickedly impressive in its own right in its own day. I don't know, it just gives you a better sense of context and scale. And this brings our walk along the ramparts ooh, to a close. That was significantly more than I expected. I definitely thought it wasn't gonna be nearly that accessible. And they've done such a good job preserving it. Safety with like stairs that they've installed, modern stairs there at the end so you could actually move through. Everything just, I don't know, it's really impressive. And thankfully dumped us out right by the cathedral. So I, or it's actually a basilica. Sorry, I said cathedral earlier. It's a basilica. Gonna give that a go. Check it out. There's some fancy gargoyles up top, some lesser ones down here, but I'm really, really interested in the stained glass because based on what I saw from that video that they were showing us, probably pretty impressive. impressive it's a beautiful church but especially with like the uh, stained glass I don't know there's something unique to it just the architecture it's got a gothic feel but it's something very different about it if, I could, if only I were you know more articulate the other thing just the stained glass windows are in incredible the sense in there with the lighting and just the overall feel even though it's much smaller to me this is much more impressive than the cathedral that we just saw in Bordeaux partially because I imagine it was harder for them to get everything up here to build this and also partially because it's just much more ornate it's this octagonal tower that really stands out to me as well there's something about it that just makes it I don't gives it a really different feel. This is when I feel like I need to go read some books and get better educated about ancient architecture. I feel a little bit underprepared to share my thoughts, but that in particular really, really stands out to me. The rest of it's just, how did they, they packed so much stained glass, so many big and like, to me, impressive windows in such a small structure. It's crazy, I like it, a lot. All right, I'm gonna finish wandering around town and then I think, really, we've seen a lot today. This, this, is, this is getting pretty close to wrapped on Carcassonne. Okay, this one's the most surprising thing in all of, what, what, what? There's an all blacks rugby store in What? I think what makes a fortress like this so impressive and so just inspiring is that it feels like with enough time and enough rocks, you could make one of these yourself, right? I feel like I could build this. Just, you know, might take me a couple hundred years if I was doing it by myself, but you don't need cranes, you don't need modern machinery. They didn't have it, and look what they accomplished. That's really cool. The other thing, I was talking about those circular lines. Look at this. Somebody like painted, I think if you go up here, the perspective catches it just right, but all the way up, not just down here, like all the way up. And supposedly, I need to look this up, but what I was told by the French lady that lives here was that they just went over, like went up overnight. Somebody painted in big yellow lines, these giant circles, all the way up the side of the castle, that's, Im that's also really impressive. How? How did they do that? All right, I did a little bit of research. Turns out it was a Swiss artist named Felice Verini to celebrate, I think it was the 20 year anniversary of them getting UNESCO heritage status, is that right? Yep, that's it, 20 years as a, as a world heritage site. It looks way cooler now that the castle is like darker around where it was, which shows you just how dirty it got within the last year. But it was really funny because the lady that explained it to me last night talked about how it was graffiti, and I think what she meant was everybody saw it as graffiti in the community, not that it actually was graffiti, either way. Uh, slightly exaggerated in the telling, 
But now we all know something that uh, didn't go over super well. The French keep trying at least. I mean, they do keep trying to bring the modern, fun, exciting spins to things. They just don't always go over well. But sometimes they're beloved later. Like the Pyramids of the Louvre, which just celebrated their 30th anniversary. All kinds of great stuff. Anywho, this has been pretty great. I had a great time wandering around, eating snails, recounting half-true stories to you about yellow lines on castles. Definitely glad that we looked that up. I'll link to the story that I read about that below if you want to learn more about that. And of course, if you want to come here to Carcassonne, highly worth it. Really, really worth it. I think this place is great. I'll do a little tour of the Airbnb tomorrow morning on the way out is the plan, assuming that I get up early enough to not have to rush out. But one of the things that I wanted to highlight about this one's location is just, I mean, just look at how close to the fortress I am. It's insane. Ah, and there's a pizza place around the corner. I'm probably gonna have pizza tonight because I love pizza. And I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning for yet another travel day all the way back to dear sweet Paris. Hope you had a great weekend. See you tomorrow.